Compositors are mostly known for being asset assemblers. Near the end of the post-production pipeline, we bring together one cohesive image using many different pieces. However, compositors also create various types of assets and templates of their own. We do this by using various noise setups or particle simulations, as well as 2D elements. Now, Nuke does have its own particle simulator, which you can see here, but in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the Point Render plugin by Higex, which is for Nuke, and it creates particle-like effects or motion graphic style effects. So we're only going over one example in this tutorial, but I do recommend checking it out. It's a pretty awesome plugin. Uh, you can do a lot with it. It's even used in the Nuke 14 splash screen, so it's pretty widely used. We're going to be going over how to create this motion graphic style effect in Nuke. Uh, primarily, we are using the Higax Point Render plugin to create this effect, but there are multiple layers being used. So this is just a kind of a graphic I made for the last tutorial, which is just explaining what a LiDAR projection is. So I figured some people might be interested just to see some of the creative techniques that we can apply to get different types of effects similar to this. So for those who are not familiar, I'll just do a really quick rundown and then I'll run into uh, how I did the setup. But basically the plugin has different nodes uh, that we can scatter points along uh, basic geometric surfaces or geometry that we can bring in. And so here we have a point plane and basically it's creating all these points along the position pass of this uh, basically what would be a card. And we can control the amount of uh, points that scatter on the surface. So for example, in the point plane, we can increase the width and height and you'll see that there are more points that appear. And we put it through a point render and that's how we get the, these type of renders in Nuke. Uh, if we put, put a point fractal node, we can put some different shapes through there so we can actually distort this and do all kinds of motion graphic style effects here. So we can offset this and we can make it look like uh, it was animating through. Uh, we could reduce the amplitude or we could change some of these settings that are kind of behaving like noise. And so that's like a really quick and simplified version of uh, what this plugin is capable of. Uh, I will say the plugin is extremely capable in doing a number of things. So this is a very, very basic explanation. Uh, but that's just for the people who have never seen it before. And uh, now we'll continue on to kind of what I did with this. And uh, if you're interested in picking up the plugin, you can do that. The main part of this effect is actually using the LiDAR scan that I got from the real scene. Um, if you plug it in directly, so I just put a constant into the uh, OBJ that I have of this scan, and I put a point geo source UV, uh, which is basically scattering those points except on the geometry that we're bringing in. Now, by default, it comes in looking like this, and that's because the UVs of this object are kind of weird because uh, it's coming from an auto UV that the, the LiDAR scan actually did. So if you look at what that does, this is the texture that comes with uh, the LiDAR scan by default, and you can see there's sort of these patches in different areas. So there's an auto UV layout that uh, probably Polycam is just sort of creating in the app, and then that's how it's texturing the uh, surface. Now, we're not really using uh, any of the texture or anything like that, but that's just why uh, it looks like that. And this is, so this we know is our UV layout. Uh, so basically what, what I wanted to do was to replace the UVs here so that the points would scatter in a way that it looked like were coming from the camera. And so essentially what you want to do is UV project uh, and replace the UVs of this geometry. So the, in, in Nuke, there's a node called UV project, not project 3B, 3D, but UV project. And so if I switch this geo source node to this here, so this is just a temporary camera and a UV project. So I'll just switch this over and you'll see that now we have a much cleaner result. So essentially what it is, is if I just zoom out, I just created a new camera here. This is not like an animated camera or anything. It's just a default camera node. Um, and essentially, if I move this around, we can see that the points will actually come from the perspective of that camera. And so uh, that's a pretty cool technique because now we can animate this and we can have points that look like they're moving around on the surface. Um, also, if we were to reduce the number of points, so I could say the point density here and just bring it down a bit, and that's gonna give us a little bit more of that effect, but exaggerated. And so you see that those points are all coming from uh, this camera. And so uh, that's pretty much the, the bulk of the effect. So if I actually switch over here to the actual uh, setup I did here, so I'll just switch this over. It's the exact same setup except from an animated camera. So if I just look at this, we have this camera that I just keyframed and swinging around the environment. So if I open the geometry at the same time here uh, with the transform, you can see this is the camera motion we have. And then I also have the shot camera, which is actually going the other way around. So this, this camera goes this way. 
um, even though it's not previewing correctly here, the cameras are swinging both directions. And so if I just go back to the start here and take a look at what that looks like, about frame 100, I think 106 is when it starts. We did have a little bit of error here, but uh, one other thing I was doing was I put a sphere with a merged geo over our scan. Because if you just plug in the UV project uh, with our sort of our projection camera directly into the LiDAR scan, this is the effect, which is what we expect, right? It's projecting out the points from the angle that it, the camera is swinging around. Uh, but what I wanted to do was kind of reveal this effect sort of spreading over time. And so what I did was I, I took a sphere and I parented it to the camera. So I took the, the camera's position. So if I double click the camera and I opened two panels here so I could see both at the same time, I basically just control drag the translate and I put it into the sphere so that the sphere will, will actually stick to the position of the camera. So you can see that as the camera starts moving around, the sphere is following but I keyframed the scale so that the, the sphere would just get bigger over time. And so what that does, if we don't put a texture in the sphere and we're merging it with the merge geo, uh, essentially it's blocking the projection. And so what, what does that mean? If we're blocking the projection where the sphere is, it's not gonna project the UVs past the sphere. So we only see the dots appearing within the sphere uh, that's there. And so when, when we actually look at that effect, I'll go to the pre-comp here, if we look at that effect, we see that uh, it's giving us those points spreading across the surface. And so I'll give it a second to cache here just so we can see it in real time here. But that's sort of what the effect looks like. And what's interesting about it is that those points are moving up and down along the geometry as our camera is moving around, which gives us that sort of effect where it feels like there's kind of lasers shooting out onto the surface. Now, the next part of what I did was essentially the same exact technique, except rather than projecting the points onto the environment, I just did the same point render setup, but only with the spheres. We don't have the geometry in this setup at all. We just have a constant plugged in the sphere, so it will catch the material and make the points appear. And we're doing the same UV project with the same camera, same geometry, and the same uh, geo source, except no geometry. The only difference is here is that we have, uh, in the point render, there's a setting called occlusion. And what you can do is you can plug in uh, a scanline render with uh, another geometry. So basically just cutting out uh, the sort of the LiDAR scan uh, from our points. And so that's just gonna give us this pass by itself. So if I just let that play, we see that we get that secondary effect of these sort of points uh, going around. And I thought that was kind of a cool effect to just combine on top. So we have like, the scan going there and we have the sphere that's sort of containing it. So as the effect spreads, we get this halo that's kind of going around. And by having it on a separate layer, it allows me to fade that off uh, over time if I want. The next part of this is just normal post effect work. So we're just doing an exponential glow, uh, plusing it back on, giving it a little bit of a glow here. Uh, there's a cool technique here and where I'm using these convolve filters. I've created a library of convolve filters, like sort of random colors and stuff, because it's a really awesome way to create flares. So I've created a library of about, I think, 300 of these. And essentially, you can just inject colors by using a convolve. And in the convolve, we say use input channels. So you take this multicolored sort of abstract effect and we put it onto the image. And what that gives us uh, is these really, really nice flares. Um, and it's not the sort of typical flare you see from like a camera pointing a spotlight uh, towards you, but it is sort of a realistic flare in the sense that you get these sort of uh, abstract uh, highlights overlapping each other. And that's a very unique way to create a flare. And so we can take this result and plus it over our image. So when we have that explosion, we're getting a cool flare. And now we don't really want that sharp edge. So what I did was I created another glow on top. And if we just let that play, we see it gives us a little bit of a more integrated edge where it feels hot on the edge. And if we step forward a few frames, uh, we can actually, maybe we can jump down in the script to just look at the result of that. So we can see that's a result. Uh, we get this exploding light effect and we have these rings that feel like they're actually flaring out from the light source. And so if I let that play uh, just by itself, we see that those rings are expanding. And so that's just the, the post effect on top of that. Um, and I did have a, a sort of a residual uh, uh, layer of points in the background. So you see this dark blue that's behind the whole projected effect. And that's essentially uh, just another point setup with the same geometry, except uh, I just darkened it and made it a little bit blue. And so that's just fading on in the background just to give something sort of like uh, 
slowly illuminating behind, uh, as if something was left behind when that laser has passed over it. Uh, so that was the idea behind that. So if I let that play, you can see that's, that's the effect that we're getting from all of those layers combined. The next thing in the composite here is adding uh, some geometry for the camera. So all I did was model a really simple uh, little triangle here in Blender. It's, just, it's literally just like a square and I just moved vertices in. So if you just look at the geo, uh, we can see what that looks like. It's just a square with the vertices kind of shrunk. Uh, I used a transform geo to, to plug in an axis on the axis branch, the camera that's moving. And so what that does is it allows us to uh, essentially Let's just take a look, we'll load the geo here, and a look at the transform geo. That'll just stick it to the camera and looking at the same angle as the camera. So I just wanted something to represent, um, you know, the direction that the camera is looking in. Uh, and I put a wireframe uh, shader onto it so we get this out of the render, just a basic wireframe on a geometry. And then just turning that green to kind of make it pop a little bit um, and putting this over the image. So now we have something that we can actually look at. Uh, to get the idea of what this effect is supposed to be, uh, which is a camera projecting out laser beams, essentially. Um, and then the next step here would be the actual beams themselves. So this is similar to the God Ray tutorial I did. If you watch that tutorial on my channel, it's the same technique, except we're doing it with really, really small points. In the point render, this is what the render looks like. It's the same geometry and the same technique we used before, except I reduced the number of points to a really low number. And so you get uh, sort, sort of a more sparse effect of these dots moving around. Uh, the reason I did that was because when I do the God Ray, if I set the center point uh, to the camera, the, everything pulls towards the camera. So if I brighten that up, you can see what that looks like. It's pulling all those points to the camera. I just manually keyframed the center uh, looking at where the camera's traveling. So this is a 2D effect. These rays aren't actually 3D, it's all screen space, uh, but it looks 3D. So that's an uh, interesting thing we can do. And so a uh, little bit of color correction, a little bit of a glow, and then we get these rays. If we plus that over, uh, that gives us this effect. So if we go down, that's pretty much all of it. So if I just let it play here, uh, we can look at the effect here. So that screen space effect is giving us something that feels like light rays are being projected outward. So that's it for this effect, for the primary uh, aspect of it. I guess at the end here, we do a little sort of a fade into a wireframe and then into just a simple textured uh, representation and then the final texture. And so that's literally just a, a merge uh, that's been key mixed on, on some of the different layers. So. Uh, for example, I just took the geometry with a wireframe and we just fade that on uh, to kind of see that. And we also have a checkerboard assigned to that same geometry on another layer. And we just, uh, I did it multiply an ambient occlusion against it to give it a slight shadow. Uh, so we can see a constant, an ambient occlusion, the geometry, and then a ray render. That's how you create the ambient occlusion, uh, which is being multiplied on, which gives you just this little shadow effect. Uh, and then it's just being merged over with this mix being kind of brought down. And finally, uh, the same idea here. We have the geometry with the texture just being brought down. So that's about it for this tutorial. If you guys thought this was cool or you liked it, make sure to hit the like button or subscribe. And that's about it.